chosen. Hi folks, this is a new intro to a rather remarkable vid that I produced on my other YouTube channel. Um, I'm making this version to put up on this channel because the subject matter is important and needs to be seen by all. Uh, specifically, this individual you see here, his name is Doug Rowland. He more or less admits, at least from his perspective as a heliophysicist at the Goddard Space Flight Center, that chemtrails are indeed a real phenomena in the sense of, that we think of them. You know, that being intentionally put, put out condensation trails that have specific chemicals within them to achieve a certain purpose. I'll go ahead and roll the clip. Not, um, we're a civilian space agency dedicated to science and research and so on. So we're very, uh, very keen to make sure that the taxpayers know what we're doing and everything. So. Well, you know, when the, when the article came out in the major newspapers, including the Huffington Post, there was no mention of lithium, not one. Not one mention of lithium until I heard the recording of the actual, I, I listened to it. I listened to the rockets go off. I had no idea there was going to be a lithium dispersed until I heard payload lithium dispersed. Right. There was lithium dispersed, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. I think you might be under some misconceptions about what we're doing, but I'm happy to tell you any details that you need. Well, I know that it says in your article that you're doing it for communications. Okay, I'm happy to talk to you more about it. There, there are many reasons we're doing it. Okay. We don't understand how the wind in the upper atmosphere moves. Mm -hmm. In these chemtrails, there's different kinds of chemtrails, as you probably know. Different trails at night we use and different trails during the day. The wind blows them around. They glow either on their own or from scattered sunlight. We take pictures and we can see how the wind trail moves around. I'm not sure why this guy feels he has to give the answer why chemtrails are being sprayed to the caller. He said he was going to communicate with her exclusively through email, as that was his preference. But then he goes on to give this bizarre explanation about how these trails are sprayed, apparently all over the world, just to study wind patterns. I'll continue. I use that to, to infer what the wind is. Just like if you were taking a picture of an airplane contrail, you could use that to see how the wind was blowing up at those altitudes. This is much higher altitude, so we use these chemical trails. And what, what is the, the purpose of knowing what the wind's going to do in the ionosphere? The purpose is the ionosphere is really to understand our planet. It's very fundamental science. We're trying to understand every day we know there's electric currents that flow over the head that are just naturally there. They've been there for, you know, ever since the Earth had an atmosphere and a magnetic field. And the wind is driven by the sun. The sun heats the atmosphere. The I just want to pause here. Do you think these ugly skies are worth it for NASA's curiosity? Let's continue. The wind blows, and every day that wind drives an electric current. And we're trying to understand what causes that, essentially how does it work in detail. And also importantly, when the sun becomes active with lots of sunspots and lots of uh, magnetic activity, that changes the wind pattern and changes the electric current. So we want to understand both what it is on a regular day when there's no solar activity, and then what it is when there's a lot of solar activity. Is there some other kind of a way that you can use it without using dispersing the lithium? We're researching other ways. The lithium is actually harmless to the environment, and we could t show you more about that, but it is tricky to use because we have to, it's very faint. Uh, you can't see it with your naked eye. You have to, you know, have special cameras to see it and so on. So we don't like to use it for that reason. It's hard, it's, in other words, it's hard measurement to make. We're researching other ways to put sensors directly on the rocket to measure the wind. And those are ongoing. We're trying to develop those now. In fact, one of the purposes of this mission was to do that. Okay. Well, you've explained it to me then. I, I, I don't agree with it, but I appreciate you explaining it to me. Email too if you have if you have detailed questions anything you want. Okay, I will. I'm gonna I'm gonna research a little more and I will email you and I appreciate you taking the time out to speak to me today, sir. At your call. It's not often we get to hear from members of the public and people who are really interested and concerned with what we're doing. I, I wish, really appreciate your time. I wish more people would call. I really do. I've called my senators. I've called my governor. You can't get through to anyone, sir. You can't get through to anybody. Yeah. I go to my city council. I live in rural North Carolina. They don't care. They 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 laugh you out of there. There, there's no other recourse for us, sir, to, and, unless to t talk to people directly and find out what is going on, because we're paying for it. Well, I, I don't know how far you are from Wallace Flight Facility. Uh, is that easy? Is that drivable from where you are? Where is it, sir? I, I don't know where it is. 
it, it's uh, it's 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 north of Norfolk, Virginia. It's on the eastern shore of Virginia. If you if you if you're at Norfolk, it would probably take you another two and a half hours to get there. Uh huh. So if you're in North Carolina, I don't know where you are, but maybe. I don't right. Know. Yeah, I'm I'm in uh, Western rural North Carolina near the Tennessee border. Have a chance. You might consider either going to Walt, going to uh, Goddard Space Flight Facility, which is outside of DC. Uh, there is Clemson University, which is where the, all the chemical release work is done. Oh, really? Well, that's very close to me. You might contact those guys. That they, that I'm sure they'd be happy to explain what they're doing. Oh. Okay. And now you have a contact, apparently at Clemson University. That's a source of where this research is being done. That's awesome. Okay, I will do that. Um, just just look, ask for the science department. Well, I, I don't know what department they're in, but Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N, Miguel Larson is the lead. And he's been doing this for decades and could explain in detail what they're doing and why it's, why it's, uh, why it's not an issue uh, for people living. We wouldn't, you know, we, we would be, as government agency, we would not be allowed, you know, to do anything that would be harmful. So he, he's under strict controls and that sort of thing. So he can explain it to you. He can even show you around, that sort of thing. Okay, and you said his name was Miguel, Miguel Larson with an L? A-R-S-E-N. Okay, at Clemson. Okay, well, thank you so much, Mr. Rowland. I appreciate all of your information. Yeah. You. And there you have it, folks. This is one of the most gaslit topics aside from the shape of the earth. Now look at Wikipedia's response. Contrail. The manipulation is a degree that's amazing. I find this video exciting because, to me, generally a thing is not real until you have a person who's in their official capacity tell you that it's real. There's a notion rampant throughout the freedom community that the so-called controllers of this world will not do things without the person, or in this case, the citizenry's consent. I like to dispute that notion because research is being conducted in disguise and it's safe to say people as a whole would not give their consent, even if provided a nice benign explanation like what this guy provided about how the trails are used to determine wind patterns. When any of a variety of things are done to you without your consent, would you then conclude you're living in a heaven or living in a nightmare? What are the limits of what can be done to you? or what can be forced into your body. What is your recourse against this unauthorized force? When verbal communication of your wishes through petition falls short, you are then left with the option of learned helplessness or forceful insurrection. We've gotten to this point where our skies are littered because people have chosen the path of going along to get along. Submission is at the heart of human nature. And that can be augmented with specific chemical stabilization, including with lithium, as well as with fluoride. On my YouTube page, I have demonstrated numerous instances of direct crimes against humanity as well as other curious manifestations of nature, such as the power of words, which is completely suppressed. From all of the data I've seen, it would seem to me that our predicament is going to head towards complete totalitarianism, short of divine intervention. I'm not sure if the Q army, or Steinbarton crew, or even Elon Musk is enough but patriots will go to the end. I'm sorry to end this video in such a morose tone, but it's my strategy to attempt to project perfectly that which I learn. Goodbye, Truth Seeker.